Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Why? Guys, he's peaceful. He's I'm peaceful. I'm not doing wrong. anything wrong. Guys, what? Why are you arresting him? Guys, why are you arresting him? I have medical Excuse me. Why are you arresting him? The leader. Peacefully assembled and the child. Apparently, the child is being killed. Get in! Get in! Get in! Get in! Get in. Get in. Get in. I have seen some outrageous fight the fines cases come to us here at Rebel News, but today's story of Brittany Green and Nick DeAngelis of Bathurst, New Brunswick, could possibly be one of the very worst. Now, for those of you who don't already know, Fight the Fines is Rebel News' largest civil liberties project to date. You see, we're pushing back against these big government tyrannical infringements on our civil liberties, all in the name of fighting the spread of the coronavirus by helping Canadians fight their lockdown tickets, one lockdown ticket at a time. If you've received a lockdown ticket, we don't want you to pay it. We want you to fight it. We want you to plead not guilty to that lockdown ticket and then reach out to us at fightthefines.com. Dot com. And if we think your case has merit, we'll put you in touch with a top criminal lawyer at no cost to you. We will crowdfund your legal fees and we will fight your fine together. Now, the case of Nick and Brittany is months in the making. So as you watch the videos and clips that I'm going to show you today, you'll see my hair change, you'll see my clothes change, you'll see my makeup change, you'll even see my computer change. Because I've been working on this story for three full months in the background. On December 31st, Nick and Brittany were first arrested and criminally charged because they were buying groceries in the local grocery store that they normally shop at but they weren't wearing masks because they're both mask exempt. I want to repeat that. They received criminal charges and were pinned, physically restrained by the police for the crime of not wearing a mask when they are medically mask exempt. That's where the situation escalated to. Brittany even has a doctor's note to prove she's exempt. Take a listen to our first interview. So basically, we just went grocery shopping uh, like we normally do at Atlantic Superstore. And um, it was me, Nick, our friend Dave, and a few others. And um, we went in and everything was fine. Uh, we have mask exemptions. And um, basically, we walked in and then uh, an employee chased after us. And um, he kind of just yelled at us that we need to wear masks in front of everyone it was uh, really embarrassing so uh, our friend Dave kind of just snapped back at him and, and told him to leave us alone and um, then Nick had stated that we have an exemption and um, and then we did our shopping for a little while and then a cop came in and um, he basically just demanded that we wear masks and we stated that we had exemptions and I actually took them out of our um, binder and I showed him the exemptions and he said okay well I'll see if these are approved and I said well I don't need you to <laughs> to see if they're approved I already know they're approved and um, we just kind of like explained to him you know we have the right to be here we have the right to be shopping you know I'm familiar with the policy at this grocery store I know that they allow for exemptions um, I'm not sure why the manager didn't just come speak to us instead of just calling the cops immediately but uh, he felt the need to go that route. So um, so Nick and Dave were just kind of explaining our rights to the cop and um, he felt the need to call for backup and then seven cop cars came. <laughs> and then um, uh, Nick was recording the whole incident for our protection and um, thank God that he did. <laughs> they knocked the phone out of my hand and they kept my phone. I can't get it back. They said they're keeping it as video evidence. Again, like like it's some sort of crime. So they stole my thousand dollar phone and I had, I canceled my phone contract, which ticks me off. I mean, I don't have a phone anymore. Um, but 
basically things escalated and uh, about six cops tackled Nick to the ground quite violently. They smashed the phone out of his hand. Um, uh, they, they ripped his hair out. And I was freaking out at this point because obviously like this is someone that I love and it was really scary. So I was just screaming at them to get off of him. And um, the next thing I knew I was being thrown to the ground as well. Um, and then our friend Dave also got arrested and we were all taken to the station and um, they held us there for 12 hours in jail. And uh, they're attempting to charge us now with three criminal charges. And we got fines on top of that. Yeah. Um, what happened? Like I was being a bit assertive to the police. And, like, that's the way I am. Like I, when I shop, I shop with this, this thing. It's full of randomized control style studies, proving masks don't work. And I kind of educate the police. And I said, basically, well, I mean, it's the same material on both sides. So you're protected and I don't really need your protection for a mask. I'm not looking for, for like a protection from a flu. And the last thing I said to him was like, when there's more uh, officers approaching, I said, not wearing a mask is not a crime, just like that. And they, without warning, they just tackled me, threw me to the ground uh, very violently and like basically arrested me with, it was, there was no warning at all. And they literally, when they charged me, it's just stop resisting, stop resisting, stop resisting. Right, like that's just the way they're trained. I didn't resist right. at all. They, they, it's basically assault what they did. And we, we have at least, at least one witness that was with us and she'll testify. I mean, uh, what what they did inside jail, the, the worst thing they did in jail, what people, they wouldn't let us leave. They, I had our medical exemptions. I asked the officers. They wouldn't even, uh, uh, they wouldn't take our medical exemptions. Like they didn't uh, obey them. So they, they, they wouldn't acknowledge them. So when we had to leave the cell, they said we couldn't leave unless we put these on our face. And these, this is the actual one they put on my face. It's an N95 mask. It says this respirator helps to protect against certain particles. Misuse may result in sickness or death right on the mask. And they made us, they put us into this little ritual. And I said the same thing. I'm like, you're protected. Like, I don't need your protection. Um, and so they, we couldn't even leave without, without doing it. And that's, it's so abusive. It's so the abuse of power. And the reason why this is, we've had the police called on us maybe eight times by customers, employees here, because since the mask mandates in New Brunswick, I've seen three other people not wear a mask in the store. And I, when I, we go out all the time, we go to malls, this and that. So the compliance rate here, when you don't wear a mask, you really get, you really get uh, harassed. harassed. And I, we've been to the, we've been to the, the Moncton Mall and five RCMPs show up and just follow us around just because we're not masked. Mask. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, so, just because you don't wear a muzzle. So they held you for, you said, I think, 12 hours. Yeah. And then yes. you, you were released without charges, but with fines. What were the total of your fines? Uh, and what were they the for? Were two, they were 292, the fines. Um, but no, they, they charged us criminally with three different charges somehow. <laughs> I don't I don't understand yeah. how they even um, are able to, to do that, but they have quite the stretch of the imagination. So yeah. what are what are the three different criminal charges that you're facing That's for trying sorry for trying to buy groceries in a grocery yeah. store when you're medically mask exempt? Obstruction yeah. of an officer, uh, mischief and disturbing, disturbing the peace. Uh, yeah, we which, were we were assaulted, but somehow we were, we were disturbing the peace. <laughs> yeah. They don't like when you educate them and you actually stand your ground and actually teach them about human rights. They they just don't like that. No. Now, what is it like for you guys when you go out grocery shopping? Now, are you wearing masks? Absolutely, we'll never ever wear a mask. That's it's my body. It's I will never ever wear one. It's my body. It's my choice. Just says that everyone, everyone, if they want to wear it, they can wear it. No, we, we continue to, to stand our ground and to shop with no mask. But I have to say, after that experience, it, it is a little bit more uh, intimidating now. Oh, but Nick and Brittany's story doesn't end there. Although it should have, because what happened to them? Well, it was bad enough. Nick and Brittany now are victims of the lockdown. And what do victims of the lockdown do in a free and liberal society? Well, they have the right to protest the thing that the government has done to them. So Nick 
and Brittany went to an anti-lockdown protest. It's your right to protest bad government decisions in this country. And a pandemic does not take that right away. Not to mention, Nick and Brittany were protesting outside, in the open air, in a very small group. Now, if you, you think what happened to Nick and Brittany was bad the last time, ending up with a criminal charge for not wearing a mask and buying groceries, this gets even worse. So we fast forward a few weeks from the incident in the grocery store. Nick and Brittany and their friends were rounded up at a protest by the police, held by the police in jail, in solitary confinement for several days before being released with additional criminal charges. It's almost too crazy to believe that this is happening in Canada, but here is Nick and Brittany to tell you the full story. Take a listen. Just on your own this time. Is, we, you, we, we worked really hard. This I just went back. over a lot this of stuff. This is the US mistake. It has uh, court rulings, video confessions, and everything. And we promise you, if you, if you guys ex, like under, start to under, have a better understanding with knowledges, we all will promise yeah. you. Yeah. Look at what because happened with Italy. 50,000 businesses opened up. No, the government no, couldn't no. do anything. So I'm going to take it later. What about that? Okay, yeah, thank you very much. I'm, yeah. We're getting this out yeah. to everyone. Well, just so you know, world. I have a hundred studies because here that show masks yeah, actually don't do anything. Yeah, you the emergency measure act, so we'll be course. giving you a ticket. That's please okay. provide, yeah, please provide, please provide the information to do that. Because there is no emergency, because 13 deaths in the uh, province of 800. Please thousand. provide a piece of ID so I can write you the ticket. Uh, it's Nick DeAndres. I don't have ID on me. I don't carry ID on me. Okay. I've had millions of tickets. I don't know how many tickets I've had of these. Yeah. Nick DeAngelo, so here's my. Here we go. More. More Terry. More Terry. I'll get. I'll. I hope you got. I don't know how you got. Brett. Brittany. Brittany. Brett. Brett. Brittany, Brittany, he's calling. He's calling you. Nick is calling you. What the fuck? Yeah, no, I'm not doing anything. You will have a lawsuit. You will have a lawsuit on your hands, people. He, I don't know why they're arresting. He was just talking to him. That's all he was doing. Just talking. I'm not doing anything wrong. Guys, what? Why are you arresting him? Guys, why are you arresting him? I have medical Excuse me. Why are you arresting him? 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 Excuse
And uh, so we went over and we joined, we joined in with everyone else. And um, our friend was arrested almost immediately. Um, and then uh, Nick was arrested and then our friend John was arrested and then I was arrested. And the thing is, everybody else who was there just got fines. But for some reason, we got arrested without, nobody even asked me what my name was. They just came up behind me and said, Brittany Green, you're under arrest. Um, Nick, they asked him what his name was and he told them what his name was. He wasn't refusing to identify himself. And um, yeah, he just got taken away as well. And it just doesn't make any sense because everybody else just got fines. The only people that got arrested were the people that refused to identify themselves. And we were just immediately taken away and arrested, just abducted and taken to the cop station. And um, this time we ended up actually going to jail so we sat in cells at the cop station for 24 hours. And then the next day, the judge and the crown decided that we needed to go to jail because uh, we were a threat to society, basically. And we were in solitary confinement in total for four days. And um, we had no idea if we were getting out. Nobody really told us anything. We just we knew we had a bail hearing coming up and we weren't really sure if we were going to be stuck in jail or what was going to happen. So uh, it was pretty scary. This is the kind of thing that you hear about coming from like North Korea, Russia, totalitarian regimes where you just swoop up a bunch of peaceful protesters who are protesting the government. Let's remember, you are protesting government decisions, which is your right in this country. They nabbed you by name, in your case, Brittany, and held you for four days. Some of that was spent in solitary confinement. I can't even believe that this is happening in Canada. This is like political prisoner stuff. It, yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. And with the Emergency Measures Act, I mean, basically, they just throw you in solitary confinement for, for up to five days before they even bring you into jail. And if anyone gets sick in jail, if you refuse a PCR test, it's 14 days in the hole. Yeah. I mean, and it, I mean, the food's enough to make anyone sick there. It's, it, the, it, for someone, especially like me, when you have lots of energy, you basically, after a couple of days, you're just circling around like a rat in a cage. It's actually very traumatizing because... You have no idea when you're getting out and there's it's just there's nothing to do you're yeah. and what i what what i did was i showed up with Brittany and my friend and all i was doing was handing out folders that take a more factual logical based approach uh towards the lockdown measures and i was handing them out to police i spent twenty five hundred dollars of my own money making these folders up and i've been going to city halls and, and uh, trying to get them uh, filed in the respected mailboxes so the city, the, the Counselor. councillors and the mayors can read them. I've been in the police stations, hand in the police stations, and there's a concerted effort not to look at these files because of what they prove. They, they go against the government narrative. And I was at the protest, I was actually ecstatic because a one officer came up to me and she's like, I want one of these folders. And she took it from me, which was amazing because that's why I'm there in the first place, because she said, I'm going to read this. And another officer took a folder, but over 95% of them don't want to look at the information. So that's what I've been doing for many months on end is just trying to trying to help the police take a more uh, logical approach on what they're doing and trying to get them to question what they're doing. If I ever even imagined I was going to end up in jail for for that many days, I wouldn't have went wouldn't have went to the, the peaceful assembly. I just it baffles my mind. I mean, when you, I mean, if you resist if you resist fascism, I mean, you end up in in you basically end up in jail. I mean, yeah, uh, like, yeah we we had no idea that we would end up in jail. Like, I do not ever want to go back. It was the worst experience I've ever had in my entire life. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, honestly. I mean, and the media, okay. the, the, I'll, I'll add something, the terrible part, the, the global and, and what is it, CBC, they basically put our, put our names out there, our, our, our address basically, because our street literally has like only a few houses on it. And they put our names and our ages and then... Our, and and they and they told everyone my personal health information. So I actually in, in at my bail hearing, I actually shared my medical note exempting me from wearing a mask. And uh, the media told the whole world what my 
particular medical reason was for not wearing a mask, which I think is super wrong. And while we were in uh, jail, like at, at the bail hearing, they said, okay, Mr. DeAngelis, you have two new charges. So they went back in the past. I don't know how they did this. And they saw that I went to no frills, which I went twice. And there was no police presence, nothing. I had my medical exemption. There was no problems. I got my groceries and left. But then now, now they gave me a fine or some sort of charge for not wearing a mask in a grocery store for many previous weeks. I don't understand how that's even yeah, lawful at all. He wasn't even served the papers no, for that. I wasn't even served. Okay. Like, <laughs> so uh, what are what are the list of charges in all? What what were you held on, and what I guess are the new tickets that you've received? Okay, so in total to this point, honestly, everything keeps changing. Like they literally are changing it by the day. Like, so what happened was with me when I was getting arrested this time, they said I, it was because I wasn't wearing a mask. And then later on, they changed it when they realized I actually have an exemption. They changed it to gathering with more than five. So um, yeah, things are just changing all the time. I don't even 100% know. I got to get my disclosure to find out what I'm actually being charged with. But um, to this point, we have mischief, obstruction of an officer, disturbing the peace. That was when we went grocery shopping. And for this, uh, pre for this incident that just happened, we got another COVID ticket, another Emergency Measures Act ticket and um, for gathering with more than five. And I'm not sure. I might have got another obstruction charge. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure, but I, I got to find out. <laughs> you, you two might be, with the exception of a pastor in Calgary, the most ticketed people in the country, especially with now criminal charges and held in solitary confinement for four days. Nick, you told me what that was like. You were like a shark in the tank. Brittany, what was it? What was it like for you? Honestly, uh, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. I felt like super hopeless because there was not much communication on what was really going on, why we were there. And like, if I was going to be getting out and I, I was scared that I was going to have to stay in jail. And like, I've never been to jail before. Like, I'm not really cut out for it. I, like, I don't want to get beaten up. I, I thought like, oh my God, I'm going to die here. Like someone's going to kill me. And I, I kind of just kept having panic attacks thinking like, well, what if I don't get out? And um, it was hard. It was really hard. And the worst part about all this is the like right now, my the people who got out of jail, there was other arrests. My friend John, he the police made people sign orders so they so we can't talk. It's censorship. So we can't now talk I, to them. I can't talk to some of my friends. And if if we, if my friends talk to me, they can go right back to jail because of something they signed. And we have a friend who never got let out. He actually went straight from jail. My friend Dave into a psychiatric facility, getting a 30 day uh, psychiatric like evaluation. He's completely, completely sane. And he's the gains there, he's there against his will. And right now he's in a hole because he refused a PCR test and he's basically in solitary confinement in some sort of facility. Yeah. It's, it's not sounding much better, better than jail. Yeah. So, I mean, this is quite crazy because not only are they banning public gatherings, but then they're banning what they tell us to do instead of public gatherings. So talk to your friends online, um, gather offline with your friends to discuss the issues that are troubling you. They tell us to do that. And then now they've banned you uh, using, I guess, a condition of your release to prevent you from even talking to your friends about how much you hate the government, which is like my favorite pastime. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty insane that they're telling it's, people who they can and, and can't talk to. Like, this is really becoming quite the dictatorship. Like, this is not supposed to happen in a free country and people need to wake up. This is scary. Is this going to deter you from some of your activism against the lockdown? Because I think that's what it's designed to do. And I wouldn't blame you if you did quit because like you were in the slammer for four days. Yeah, honestly, I think that that was a big part of what this was. I think they wanted to scare us out of um, our activism and it, it worked. It honestly worked. Like we, I don't think yeah. I'm going to be protesting it anytime soon, even though like I really believe in it and I believe in our cause, but uh, I'm scared. I want to. I want to kind of keep my head down and stay out of the limelight for a little while, just until everything gets resolved. And 
well, guys, I just want to let you know that we're going to do everything we can to fight for you guys. Um, I think this is one of the more atrocious cases that I've seen in the hundreds of Fight the Fines cases that I've come across. Um, do you have any final words, I guess, for the people who may be crowdfunding or who uh, who may see your case and then sort of be deterred from exercising their charter rights to free expression? I, I honestly just want to say we're not anti-maskers. We're not viruses. I mean, we're human beings and it's our fundamental right to breathe in adequate levels of oxygen unrestricted. And, with, and we don't want to erase our identities. I'm happy showing my face. And when other people are wearing their masks, it's the same material on both sides. That means you're protected if you believe the mask works. I'm not asking for anyone's protection. I can protect myself from any flu. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and just, we're, we're very grateful for everyone that's donating and for what you guys are doing to help us. Yeah. Honestly, it's, it's such a world of a difference and it, and it gives us so much relief that we have that support. So thank you so much. And, um, just, I, I want to encourage people to keep fighting for what they believe in because really everything that's going on is unconstitutional and, you know, we need to stand strong for our fundamental liberties that are currently at risk. And we, you know, we appreciate Rebel News not censoring us and, and bringing ac accurate information to the public eye because this is very important. It's so offensive to the concept of freedom and free will and free association and the ability to have free speech in this country to see the police ticketing protesters. But they've gone one step further in New Brunswick. Now they are arresting protesters and throwing them in jail for several days in solitary confinement because they break the COVID regulations. But I suppose I should get off my high horse because in my province of Alberta, the government held a pastor in jail for 35 days for the crime of giving Christian services unregulated by the government. And just like the aforementioned Pastor Coates here in Alberta, the Crown prosecutor handling Brittany's bail case, Maurice Blanchard, argued that she should also stay in jail until her trial because she has repeatedly violated the province's COVID-19 regulations. They made the same argument here with Pastor Coates. Now, the good news is, despite all the bad things that have happened to Nick and Brittany, Rebel News was finally able to hire them a lawyer named Josh Halpern, who is going to help them fight their criminal charges in court at no cost to them. Now, I sat down with Josh just a couple of days ago to talk about the case and what comes next. Take a listen. We have to look at the context. Okay, so let's talk about the COVID rates in New Brunswick. And from the beginning, there have been 1,500 incidents of COVID. That's what's being reported. That's out of almost 800,000 people. And out of those 1,500 incidents, there have been just 30 deaths thus far, thus far. And each of those deaths, each of those individuals had underlying complications. And I mean, that's, that's crazy right there that it's such a small number, but even the number of 30, even those 30 COVID deaths, that doesn't even paint an accurate picture. In 2018, 50 people in New Brunswick died from the flu. Since COVID began, there have been eight deaths from the flu. So something doesn't add up properly. Uh, not to mention, there have been there are fewer people being hospitalized now than in previous years. So to to now apply this to to Nick and Brittany and, and this whole situation, to go ahead and say that there is enough of a danger to justify infringing on all virtually all of our charter rights that is reckless the harm that these laws have have caused and had on our charter rights is so much greater than any possible benefit yeah it, it's outrageous i don't know how the government can justify uh, ticketing young healthy individuals like nick and Brittany, but then arresting them issuing criminal charges and then putting them in solitary confinement. I, I mean, it's really just insane. And as you rightly point out, just 30 deaths 
over the course of an entire year, an entire pandemic. Now, without giving away too much strategy, because you don't work for me, you do work for Nick and Brittany. Uh, how? What is your plan of attack? I guess in the in the broader sense, of how you plan to help them. You know, before even getting to that, I, I'd like to say that you know, with Brit- Brittany and Nick, I mean, they were participating in a small relatively small non-violent protest outside okay Mm -hmm. this is not there's no violence going on and Brittany and Nick and I've spoken to them on many occasions and these are two individuals who love and care enough about their country and democracy and the constitution to take action to do something to not just sit around and watch Netflix these are not criminals these are heroes They're champions of democracy. And I say this honestly, with no ulterior motive, Um, they are out there doing something. And whether or not you agree with the substance of what they have to say, we can at least commend them for caring enough about all of us, really. Yet they're treated like criminals by the police, by the public, by the media. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, they were in jail for five days and four nights. They told me that they were in jumpsuits, They had handcuffs, they had leg cuffs. Uh, The Crown was saying that they're dangers to society. And again, this is keeping in mind the rates of COVID in New Brunswick. Again, 30 COVID deaths in New Brunswick. That's it. And these people are criminals for participating in an innocent protest outside just because they love their country. And, you know, it's puzzling to me why people are targeting them the way they are, right? Champions of our democracy, really targeting them instead of targeting, let's say, you know, people waiting in line in a packed McDonald's, waiting for a cheeseburger. You know, if you believe that COVID is a real issue, shouldn't this packed McDonald's where people aren't properly socially distancing be more of an issue? And, you know, the last time I checked, a cheeseburger is more likely to kill you than an innocent protest like this. So, you know, a no offense to Nicholas and Brittany, and I and I told them I told them this straight out. You know, th- these events and what they're doing and this, the, their protesting shouldn't be this newsworthy, covered by mainstream media the way it is. Mm-hmm. It just shouldn't. Of course, it's become newsworthy given the actions by the police, but it should. It really shouldn't be. Thank goodness Nick and Brittany have a good lawyer like Josh because they're definitely going to need it. That Crown prosecutor wanted to keep them in jail until their trial, whenever that might be. At the same time, the legal system releases offenders because of the coronavirus. It's going to be very expensive to defend multiple criminal charges resulting from these protests and being mask exempt and for the police not listening to them because they were mask exempt. But we're going to help them. So if you'd like to help us help Nick and Brittany fight these lockdown criminal charges in court, please donate today at fightthefines.com. And let me tell you, if you've donated already to help Nick and Brittany and the hundreds of other people in our Fight the Fines pipeline, thank you. I hear every day from people like Nick and Brittany about how grateful they are for the difference your help has made for them in their lives. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Every day that we haven't been kicked off of YouTube is a day that I think that we are living on borrowed time. YouTube can't wait to kick us off. Can I ask you to do something? Please go to afteryoutube.com and give us your name and email address so that we can tell you where to find us when YouTube inevitably disappears us. Again, that website is afteryoutube.com.